Welcome to session three of the Envirothon Soil Station. We are going to be discussing in depth and getting our hands dirty, determining soil texture, the most important soil property that uh, is, is necessary for identifying different soil properties and their interpretations. And Sally is, is going to be uh, discussing with you where you can go and get uh, your own supplies to do this exact experiment, this exact demonstration on your own. You'll notice that we have two soil samples here. Here is a topsoil. And here is a subsoil. They're from two different soil types and they're kept moist. We keep them in a five gallon bucket. I, I sieved out the larger rock fragments. You don't need to do that. But if you wanted to collect your own, you could do the same way by, way by going into your garden and, and collecting them. Make sure that you, you uh, um, uh, mix them up thoroughly to get them uniform. And then Sally will show you where you can go to find out uh, their exact evaluation of their soil texture. You can find a soils test at your local extension office. There's an extension office in each county. Uh, and look for Penn State Extension. You can Google that to find your local contact information. Here in Lancaster County, the number is 394-6851. Um, the office is located at the Farm and Home Center here in Lancaster at 1383 Arcadia Road. And the um, Soil sample would go into this envelope. It gets sent up to Penn State University. There's a um, brochure that comes along with the sample and it explains the costs that are involved. It's about $9 for a basic sample and then you were explaining there are additional costs. Yes, the, in order to get the soil texture done, I believe it's a total charge of $20. But if you look at, you, you've got years of soil samples here to teach your, instru to teach your students. I think it's a, an investment worth doing. So teachers, we hope that you'll take advantage of that and visit your local Penn State Extension office. Thank you, Sally. Yeah. So now we're gonna get started. You'll notice now that we're going to be look, identifying soil textures by using a soil textural triangle. So at the completion of this module, the students will be, become proficient in identifying the three major soil properties in a soil, and then identifying the amounts of sand, silt, and clay. And then using this triangle, they will be identifying one of the 12 soil textural classes that are identified. For example, if a soil is very sandy and it has a high amount of sand, say 70% sand, and we felt the amount of clay was about 10% uh, clay, where the 10% clay intersects the 70% sand, puts us right here on the textural triangle, and that puts us into this textural class of a sandy loam. So we're going to get our hands dirty by trying two different samples we're going to uh, uh, thoroughly investigate one sample and, and roughly estimate the second as time allows. Um, we, we grabbed some soil samples and, we, and I sent them off to the lab and we know what the amount of sand, silt, and clay is. The students will actually take those samples in their hand and using a water bottle, a spray bottle, will start working up these samples into a moist state. We don't want them saturated and muddy, but we want them as moist as possible. As you can see, this soil still has some crumbly uh, features to it, so I'm gonna wet it up a little bit more. And I spray and I knead it in and I'm working it and I use two hands to do this. You can see this is a topsoil because it's very dark, it has high organic matter. And slowly, this sample will become the consistency of something like Play-Doh. If you see cracks developing in it as you're squeezing it, it may need a little bit more water or it may need more kneading. You definitely want to pick out any rock fragments that you find in there and pick out any roots that you find in there because that will sway your estimates of the amount of sand or the amount of clay. So in order to estimate the textural class of a sample, we have to estimate the three particle sizes, the amounts uh, in a percentage of sand, silt, and clay in this sample. And as we've learned from our general knowledge of soils, that sand is the largest soil particle. Sand is the only soil particle that you can feel between your thumb and your forefinger. If you take a sample and pinch it and rub it between your uh, thumb and forefinger, or even take a sample and lay it in your palm and then wet it up until you make a little pond of water, and completely disaggregate that sample, making a muddy palm, you can really feel the amount of sand in there. Any individual particle that you feel is a piece of sand. 
Know this, that, that silt particles and clay particles are so small that you cannot feel them with your hands. You could only see them under a microscope or an electron microscope. So in doing so, we're going to estimate the grittiness. There's three basic feels of a soil texture. Sandy soils feel gritty. Silty soils feel smooth. And clayey soils feel sticky. So we're gonna estimate which is the major feel of this sample. Does this sample feel sticky? Does the sample feel smooth? Or does the sample feel gritty? And when I ask that question, I'm going to also have to memorize five numbers. That's the only thing that we're going to need to do is memorize five numbers. And let's go over to the board here. Those five numbers start with the number 50. And if you, if you do this and write this down on your test form in this fashion, you'll remember it all the time. So the other numbers are one, two and a half, excuse me, 20 and 40. These numbers are going to mean a lot more in just a, a small amount of time. But 50% is the sand question, okay? We're going to have our sample, and if we notice down here too as well, or up on the board, we're looking at the textural triangle, and if you notice down here that we actually have two textural triangles. One is color-coded pink and blue, and the other is color-coded pink, blue, and green. We're going to concentrate on the pink and blue textural triangle right now. They're really the same triangle. I just color-coded them to help you visually see that we have sandy textures over here in this corner. Notice all the names begin with sand or end with sand, and the non-sandy textures in the pink. Notice sand is not in the name of any of those. And if you also notice, the break between the sandy and non-sandy textures is 50%. So that's where we're going to ask, is this sample contain more or less than 50% sand? And actually, this, the, the question is simpler. Does my sample feel predominantly gritty? So that's the 50% sand question. Am I gritty? And again, sand is the only sample you can feel, so if there's a predominance of grittiness, you will feel it. And I would say that this sample does feel predominantly gritty. So I would say, yes, it's gritty, and therefore, it puts me into the blue of my textural triangle. Again, looking at sand at the bottom part of our triangle, we can have 0% sand, up to 50% sand, all the way up to 100% sand, which would be a pure sand texture. I would say that this sample feels more than 50% sand. I've just taken 12 classes and I've narrowed down my choices down to five textural classes, just by feeling the amount of grittiness. Now let's try to refine that a little bit further. Does my sample feel like it's closer to 50% sand or closer to 100% sand? And so I would feel that, and I would go through there, and I would, I would make my puddle, and I would come to the conclusion that this sample feels closer to 50% sand than 100. Oh, looks like we lost our chart here. I'm oh, sorry about that. We'll just concentrate on this chart down here. So I'm closer to this end of the blue triangle instead of this one. And then we would even refine it further. Is it closer to 75% sand or 50? You notice I'm just narrowing down my range and ultimately, I'm going to come up with a single number for sand. And I would estimate this sample to be about 65% sand. It's closer to 50, and then I would narrow that down again. Is it closer? Uh, what's half of between 50 and 75? 67 and a half. Is it closer to 50, closer to 67 and a half? I would say, well, it's not quite 67 and a half, but it's about 65%. We're halfway done, folks. We've just determined that our, our sand texture is 65%. And I could use a better marker than that. Let's put that down. The good part about a textural triangle 
is you only need two of the three numbers to, to intersect into there. So somewhere along 65%, once I estimate my clay, I'm going to be able to cross triangulate that and it's going to intersect on my triangle and it's going to give me a texture class. So in order to do that, we're going to estimate sand, excuse me, we're going to estimate clay. And clay, if we can't feel it, how in the world would we estimate that? So we don't feel individual particles of clay. What we're going to do is perform a test, a performance test. It's called the ribbon test. And we know that soils that have large amounts of clay in them can make r long ribbons. Soils that have very little clay in them could hardly form a ribbon. You'll see here that I'm forming ribbons between my thumb and my forefingers. Notice that I'm not using it like Play-Doh and, and rolling out a ribbon. And, and also notice that as you work up your samples, they tend to dry out. You might have to open them up a little bit more. You might have to wet them up a little bit more too. So here I've got my sample and I don't want to be performing this how long. This is not a ribbon. That would be considered a thread. So I'm going to take it with one hand and I'm going to push it out between my thumb and my forefinger and make these ribbons. Notice the ribbons shouldn't be any wider than your thumb and they shouldn't be any thicker than an eighth of an inch. You can see now that these ribbons are forming, albeit they are not long ribbons. Once we make our ribbons, we're going to refer to this chart of numbers that I have started and we're going to write some numbers down referring to the length of ribbons and their percentages of clay. So you can see in this hand here, and I'll lay them down on the table, maybe they will be more representative. You can see my ribbons. Okay, while you can looking at that, let's go to our chart and we have our five numbers. And notice that the one refers to a one inch ribbon. A one inch ribbon equals 20% clay. A two and a half inch ribbon generally equals 40% clay. Now if we refer to the textural triangle, the same one, but it's just color coded differently. Here's our textural triangle. Notice I've color coded it for you into blue, green, and pink. The blue areas are areas of rib where ribbons are one inch or less. The large pink area up here are areas where I can make my ribbons two and a half inches or longer. And the green zone is where my ribbons are somewhere between one inch and two and a half inches. If I continue to make my ribbons, I'm going to estimate the average ribbon length that I'm collecting. And there's another ribbon right there. And I'm, I'm noticing my ribbons are right around one inch in length. And it takes a lot of practice for someone to become good at this. It's not uh, something where it just comes naturally, you can make ribbons. It takes a lot of practice, but with practice, I've seen people make ribbons in, in heavy clay soils that are five and six inches long. So if I were to estimate my average ribbon length here, I would say they're right about at one inch. And using our guide, a one inch ribbon equals about 20% clay. So we have our two numbers. We have 65% sand. We have 20% clay. We'll, we'll refer to our textural triangle and we'll find 50, here's uh, 50, 65% and 20% actually puts us right on a line between a sandy clay loam and a sandy loam. And that's the nature of the beast. Nature doesn't like uh, cubby holes and to be uh, put into uh, classes oftentimes in nature, uh, soil samples fall right on the line. I'm sure at the Envirothon that they would accept either answer. If I had to guess what this feel was, I would say it, was, it, was, it didn't have as much clay to be a sandy clay loam. I would call this a sandy loam texture. So that's an example of how to go through a, uh, a, an analysis of estimating the grittiness of, of uh, the sand fraction of our sample and estimating the percent clay by performing the ribbon test. You would come up with the percent sand number, you would come up with a percent clay number, you would use the textural triangle, 
cross-reference them, and it comes out to one of the 12 categories. Now, I'm going to give you a couple rules of thumb, literally. A, a thumbprint in a soil sample, if I can make a thumbprint, and I know this won't show up on the screen, and actually I, it's, it's barely uh, noticeable to my eyes as well, I would say I really can't make a thumbprint in this soil. So if you can make a thumbprint, it's generally 20% clay. This one is just barely making a thumbprint. It's probably a little bit less than 20% clay, and that would prove that we're in a sandy loam. Um, some other rules of thumb would be, again, if you remember the feel and the associated text, you know, particle size. Sand feels gritty. Silt feels smooth, and clay feels sticky. If you're running out of time, and you grab a sample, and you say the dominant feel of this is gritty, you should probably guess something with sand in the name. Guess sandy loam. So the, um, figure out what the dominant feel is and put loam at the end of the name, and chances are you're gonna be close. And the way that they grade these are, you get a full credit if you get the texture correct. If you're one textural class off, you get half credit. So if you even just get yourself into one corner of the triangle where the sample is, you're gonna get some points for that. If it feels smooth, guess silt loam. If it feels sticky, guess clay loam. Just put loam at the end of the name. And that's actually a very quick and dirty if you're running out of time to do that. And we'll wrap this up with showing you a second sample. We're not going to go through the, the same mechanics, but this sample is, uh, has high amounts of clay in it. I would, with practice and with patience, be able to make five and six inch long ribbons with this sample. This sample does not have grittiness, so it would put me into the blue section of my sandy triangle, excuse me, into the pink section. And actually, I would estimate this to only have about 20% sand in this sample but I could make ribbons well over two and a half inches with this sample. So I was, I was estimating that this had about 45% clay. If I came over 45 and came up 20%, it actually puts me into a clay. And that's very close to what this texture is. Um, and what's very good is if you follow these instructions, go and get your own samples, and especially get a soil analysis done by Penn State Extension, you actually know exactly what the percent sand, silt, and clay is. So that's my demonstration of field estimating soil textures based on feel. Thank you.